Hello, Marco. As we all know, nurses are a different breed of human being. And today, I'm going to show you how their brain works with this presentation of a nurse's brain. Now, as you can see, down at the bottom of the brain here, we have the fake smile generator. Nurses are supposed to smile at all times. It don't matter how they're really feeling. They can be mad, sad, hangry, whatever. They have got to have a smile on their face when they walk into a patient's room. And that is where the fake smile generator comes in. Let's say that a patient is cussing out a nurse. Well, on the inside, that nurse is mad and they want to fight that patient. Well, that is when the fake smile generator sends a message to the facial muscles to contract in an upward smiling fashion. So even though on the inside that nurse is really, really mad and they want to do bad things to that patient, but on the outside, it looks like the nurse is smiling and everything is a-okay. Thanks to the fake smile generator. This is the caffeine addiction center. This is the most important part of the nurse's brain because you see, if the caffeine addiction center does not get the adequate amount of caffeine, the whole brain shuts down and the nurse is a lifeless slug. Now, as you can see here, at the front of the nurse's brain is something called the BS detector. You see, patients have lied to nurses so much and fed them so much BS that the nurse's brain has developed a region to detect the BS. Now up here, we got the frequent flyer database. This is where all the information of the frequent flyers is held. Their names, their medical information, what they've been admitted for for the last 15 times in the last three months. And it's all held right there. Now here we have the vein locator. The vein locator is the reason why all nurses can locate a good vein on a person from 50 yards away. Now here we have the hospital protocol storage center. This is where the brain stores all the protocols because we all know that nurses can't properly take care of a patient without protocols. Now here we got the charting center. Now the charting center is not the biggest part of the nurse's brain, but it is the most used. The charting center operates about eight to nine hours out of the 12 hour shift. Now administration would love for the charting center to be about the size of the whole entire brain. This is the call light antenna. Anytime a patient hits a call light, it will bounce off of the call light antenna and it will tell the nurse exactly what room the patient call light is coming from. Now upon entering that room where the call light went off, 90% of the time the BS detector will go off. Here we got the patient compassion gland. The patient compassion gland is so large that there's very little room for the spouse compassion gland. Nurses use so much of their compassion on their patients during their shift, that by the time they get home, the old compassion tank's on empty and they ain't got no compassion left for their poor spouse. Here we have the super strength region of the brain. It does not matter what size a nurse is, they all have super strength. I have seen a four foot 11 nurse throwing a 300 pound patient around on a bed like they are light as a feather. And that is because of the super strength region of the brain. Now here we have the code brown gland. Yes, it looks like a pile of doo-doo. You see, when a nurse is walking down the hallway, the air goes through the nurse's nose and it filtrates through the code brown gland. And if there is any hint of poo particles in the air, the code brown gland will alert the nurse of the exact room where the code brown is. This is the bladder control center. We all know a nurse's bladder can hold the same amount of urine as a five gallon bucket. You see, when the nurse's bladder fills up, it sends a message to the bladder control center saying, hey, I need to be empty. And then the bladder control center sends a message back to the bladder saying, nah, we still got like three assessments left to do. You just gonna have to hold it. And that is why all nurses can hold their urine like a camel can hold water. Last but not least, this is the patient family tolerator or the PFT for short. You can see that it is very small, almost microscopical in fact. And this is the reason why nurses have such a hard time tolerating patients' family members. You see, the PFT's only got a five question limit. Once the patient's family member has asked five questions, the old PFT overloads and it sends the nurse into convulsions. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my presentation of the nurse's brain. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless y'all. I love you.